I was actually at a recent conclave uh, in the Rocky Mountains with a couple of central bankers, one from the uh, Federal Reserve and one from the Bank of England. They'll say things privately that they won't say publicly. And I was handed a copy of Janet Yellen's playbook. The Fed is trying to kind of use propaganda, lie to us about economic prospects, talk about green shoots, use happy talk to try to get us to spend our money. The Fed doesn't know what they're doing. Don't ever think that they know what they're doing. You can print all the money you want, but if people are not borrowing it, if they're not spending it, then your economy is collapsing, even with the money printing. So you can understand it this way. So let's say I go out to dinner and I tip the waiter and the waiter takes my tip and he takes the taxi cab home and the taxi driver takes the fare and puts some gas in her taxi cab. Well, in that example, my dollar had velocity of three. One dollar supported three dollars of goods and services, the tip, the taxi ride and the gasoline. But what if I don't feel great and I stay home and watch television and I don't spend any money? Well, that money now has velocity of zero. I leave my money in the bank, but I don't spend it. Let's look at what's actually happening with the velocity of money. It's plunging. Uh, it's going down very rapidly. But compare this decline of velocity today to what we saw leading up to the Great Depression. Now, in the depths of the Great Depression, velocity was even lower. But if you compare what's going on today to what happened in the late 1920s, just prior to the Great Depression, there's a very striking resemblance so it doesn't matter how much money the Fed prints. The Fed is trying desperately to bend the curve. Think of it as an airplane that's coming in for a nosedive. It's crashing, crashing, getting close to the ground. The Fed's trying to grab the joystick and pull the plane up out of the nosedive and get it back in the air. But unfortunately, it's not working. We're heading for a crash. We've just covered a lot of these startling numbers, these signals of this coming Great Depression. Let me see if I can quickly put it all together. Nobody denies that we have a debt crisis in this country. But you're saying we can no longer grow our debt without causing our economy to aggressively slow down. We're barely above water now. So that's signal number one. Signal number two is this dangerous slowdown in our velocity of money. It's already plummeting the levels not witnessed since the Great Depression in the 1930s. 